Hi everyone, here are a few tips for creating your assessments, which as you know are section C of the course design rubric, and they also represent stage two of backward design. So in your sandbox course, we're really asking you to work in your week one module, and you're going to draft a discussion, quiz, and assignment that will help measure the objectives that you've already created for this module. Um, and again, these are draft assessments, so they don't have to be perfect. And you're going to focus on creating the instructions and setting the parameters of the assessment and then creating the prompts or the questions that you're going to have your students answer. Um, in your assignment instructions, you should note that we ask you to use our own DE Academy for examples of how to create your assessments. So I do want to quickly pull open um, our DE Academy course and remind you uh, that there are a lot of examples you can look at here. So um, we've had a discussion. We've also had an assignment every week. The sandbox, sandbox assignments would be good examples to look at. And um, I also wanted to show you behind the scenes of a quiz because quizzes in Canvas can be tricky. So I'm in the DE Academy and I'm in our module three and we had a quiz on interaction, if you'll recall. So um, here you can see in the teacher view, we have instructions and we have your objective there. And if you click edit, you can easily edit those and that's what you'll see in your sandbox. You'll see if you scroll down when you're editing a quiz, uh, the assessment parameters here. So um, whether or not you want the answers to be shuffled, how many attempts you want to allow. We're allowing multiple attempts. Um, we're allowing unlimited attempts in the DE Academy. Maybe you just want to do two attempts, three attempts. Uh, you decide. And um, also, very important in a quiz, when should students see the correct answers? Um, they should probably always see their responses. That'll allow them to see if they got something wrong and if you have any feedback programmed. But you may not want them to see the correct answers right away. Sometimes I'll do, um, if you have, for example, uh, that you're only going to allow two attempts, then you might want to let them see the correct answers only after their last attempt. So obviously, if you're going to allow multiple attempts, you don't want them to see the correct answers after their first try, because then they'll know all the answers for their second try. OK, so just make sure you fill out the settings for your quiz. And the questions are on the second tab. So the instructions and then the questions. Uh, here you can see all of our quiz questions for this quiz. And um, we did program in some auto feedback. So let me show you, for example, if I edit this quiz question, your question goes in the text box up top. You do not put the answer choices up here. We see that often. The answer choices go below. So you'll have all of your possible choices. You don't need to put letters or numbers in front of them. And then you're going to click the arrow next to the correct answer so that the quiz knows how to grade. And then you can program in some feedback, if you'd like, that will automatically show to your students. In this case, we've provided some feedback um, that will show for any answer. So no matter what they answered for this question, you would see this feedback, if they got it right, wrong, whatever. Um, let's look at another type of feedback. This next question you'll see gives feedback after each answer. So let's see what that looks like. In this quiz, or this question, excuse me, <laughs> different feedback was given, whether they got the answer correct or if they answered incorrectly. So it's more specific feedback. So that's a choice that you would make, whether to program the feedback after each question or at the very end, regardless of what they answered. And another tip for quizzes, after you've edited a question or added a question, do not forget to click Update Question before you save the quiz. So you're going to make your updates, click Update Question, and then scroll all the way down to the bottom and click Save. You have to click it in both places, otherwise your questions will be erased. Okay, and the last thing that I want to show you is when you are done, always preview your quiz and take it. Take it like a student would take it. That is the way you will see. So click preview. 
and just take it, start selecting answers. I swear this is the only way you will be able to figure out if you entered these questions correctly. You will notice some problems sometimes, like maybe you skipped an answer choice or, and so go ahead and submit the quiz and see what it looks like by scrolling down. You can see, I, I, it'll tell you if you got it incorrect, and then you can see the feedback. So this is looking good, right? Okay, so have fun with creating quizzes, um, a discussion and an assignment, and let us know if you have questions.